Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the Jubilee year and why it's so important that we learn this sacred calendar. In this video, I'm going to show you how lack of knowledge of the sacred calendar have cost us all of our blessings for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and how that can all change in the next Jubilee year that's coming up soon. But before I do, I want to say thank you to all the people that are supporting this channel financially. Now, you guys that are pushing the like button and leaving comments and sharing this video, those are extremely important as far as getting the word out. It helps get this message out, this message of truth out to many people. But in this video, I want to say a special thanks to those that are supporting financially, because with your help, I'm able to do this. I'm able to spend the majority of the day studying the scripture and looking for these facts that if it were not for your support, I simply wouldn't be able to do. I would have to find other means in order to support my family. But because of all that you guys are doing and allowing me to do this, I consider you guys my bosses. And I say I'm glad to perform this service for you. Well, for us, because I'm learning just like you are, and this information is extremely important to all of us. So thanks again, and let's get on with it. We're over here looking in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 8 through 10. Let me just read here. It says, And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Now, this is talking about the Jubilee year. The importance of the Jubilee year, we learned in another video, that it is what calibrates the moon's timing with the sun's timing. That Jubilee year is the calibration. It's like a gear in a clock that calibrates the two timepieces. That's important because the moon is the timekeeper, but the sun is the most dominant in our life whereas the moon is unseen most of the time. But anyway, let's look at verse 9. It says, Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. So this is talking specifically about the jubilee year and the day of atonement in the jubilee year and how it is that we are to blow the trumpets on this precise day. One day out of 49 years are we told to blow the trumpets. And I pointed out in another video how even on the memorial of blowing of trumpets, we're told to hear the trumpet sound, not to blow it, but to actually hear it being blown. Well, this is the one verse in the Torah where we're told to actually blow the trumpet. And it's on atonement day in the Jubilee year. Now, let's look at verse 10. It says, and ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Now, there are some that get hung up on this because it says the fiftieth year, but you have to understand that the fiftieth year is the exact same year as the first year year. Guys, it's important that we get this. I realize there's going to be some down in the comment section that's going to be confused because of all the information they've heard before. But guys, in this video, by the end of this video, I hope you understand the importance of getting this and the importance of learning this. Our blessings that is talking about in this verse are being stolen from us because we don't understand these simple points of the sacred calendar. In other words, if you don't blow your trumpet, if you don't sound your horn on atonement day in the Jubilee year, you're going to miss out on everything that is talking about there in verse 10, as we have done for hundreds and maybe thousands of years. We have missed this because we simply didn't understand how the sacred calendar works. We understand that the promises of the Bible are inheriting the entire earth. The whole planet is up for grabs. Well, guys, 
the people who sound their trumpets on atonement day are going to be the ones that get it and i'll bet on that but anyway let's go on now we're over here looking in the book of jubilees in chapter 50. this is a whole book dedicated to the jubilee years it tells when they were and what happened during those jubilee cycles this is the only book that talks about the jubilee years and what they are this is why this book is actually hidden along with the book of enoch that we're going to talk about these books have been hidden from us they're part of the hidden books which includes first enoch jubilees and the book of jasher and i believe that they're hiding these books because they tell us how the sacred calendar works these are the only books that tell us how the sacred calendar works you guys may have been on other channels and heard other ideas of how the sacred calendar works but you notice that if their calendar differs from what i'm about to show you here you'll notice that there are two things that they have in common one is that they reject these hidden books they will not acknowledge the book of enoch or the book of jubilees as holy scripture and two they're just making up stuff talking about what they feel think and believe or using other man-made documents like the book of remembrance which was written using the urim and the thummim now i have no problem with somebody writing a book using the urim and the thummim those are important sources of knowledge but you have to understand that the author of that book would have to be knowledgeable of the subject that he is writing on or like in the book of remembrance he'll come close to what the sacred calendar is and how it works but he'll miss the mark as he will actually contradict the only scriptural document that tells us how exactly it works but i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself again we're here in the book of jubilees because it's telling us the timing of the jubilee year the last known jubilee year in all the scriptural history this tells us when it was and that's when they crossed the river jordan back there with joshua when they blew the trumpets and the walls of jericho fell well the walls of jericho are about to fall again i believe in the jubilee year so it's important to understand when that jubilee year is now we can figure that out understanding that when they crossed the river jordan it was a jubilee year and combine that with all of the other data that we get from the bible talking about the births of the sons of adam all the way up through abraham and the information that we're given in genesis chapter 17 and exodus chapter 12 which all add up to the exact year of the crossing of the river jordan there in 1456 bc and simply doing the math from there we can see that the last jubilee cycle started in the year 1975 and if you're looking closely you notice here that that's 70 jubilees from 1456 whereas back over here in the book of jubilees it said that the crossing of the river jordan was the 50th jubilee and 50 plus 70 equals 120. So what this is telling us is that the 120th Jubilee ends in the year 2024. Again, guys, understand how important it is to get this right because how many people will fail to blow the trumpets in the year 2024? I say all of them. The reason why that is we learn over in the book of Jubilees and chapter six, by not keeping up with the sacred calendar and it's 364 days, it tells us pretty plainly there that people will forget the Jubilee years as well as the Sabbath day. In other words, if we don't keep track of how the sacred calendar works and use it for our reckoning of time, we won't know what day it is, we won't know what year it is and we won't know when the feast days are or anything and then it says we will even go on to start keeping the feast days of the gentiles and that is exactly the case here in the year 2022 with people keeping saturday sabbath days 
not knowing when the Jubilee year is, and are even getting the feast days wrong. This is exactly what Moses told us would happen in the book of Jubilees. And we can see that prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. So, how does the sacred calendar work? For that, you have to go to the first book of Enoch. This is actually the first book ever written on the planet. And I say that again. This was the first book ever written on Earth by any human whatsoever. And it was dictated to Enoch by the angels. You remember how in the Bible it says that he walked with God? Well, one of those guys that he was walking with was Uriel, the archangel, who explained to him the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. He was told how the sacred calendar works. How, like we learn in the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 14, he learned how the sun, the moon, and the stars are the timepieces for the sacred calendar. And then he went on to explain them to us in great detail, as we see over here in chapter 72 of First Enoch. The first thing he told us down there in verse 2 is that the day begins at sunset. Now, anybody who tries to tell you anything different, again, they're going to tell you not to read the book of Enoch. Why? It's a little bit of speculation here, but it seems like they're trying to trick us, trying to make it to where we don't know how the sacred calendar works. And the easiest way to do that is to make us reject or just not read the book of First Enoch, which, like I said, is the only book that tells us how it works. The only book that tells us how the sacred calendar works is the book of First Enoch. But anyway, what he tells us in this book is that the year starts with the first new moon after the spring equinox. Or in other words, when the sun is in the fourth portal or the fourth gate, when the days are getting longer than the nights. Like I said, it's a lot of detail. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to cover it all here. But what you need to understand out of all it is, is how he tells us about these gates or these portals and how they have specific timings. You see right there where he says the fourth gate has 30 days in it. And then down here, he tells us that the fifth gate has 30 days in it. And then he tells us that the sixth gate has 31 days in it. And that makes up a season. What he's talking about is the spring season. So there's your first gate, which starts with the spring equinox. And all you need in order to determine the head of the year is for the convergence of the new moon while it's in that particular gate. That's the way the year starts every year with the new moon after the spring equinox. But the sun only stays in that gate for 30 days and then it moves to the next gate where it stays for 30 days and then it moves to the next gate where it stays for 30 days or 31 days when you add the day of remembrance. That's in chapter 6 verse 23 when he was telling us about these days of remembrance and how those four seasonal days are what set up and calibrate the sacred calendar. Each one of the seasons has a calibration day or a seasonal day. We call it the days of remembrance and it falls at the end of each one of the seasons. So the way you have 364 days on the sacred calendar is you have 30, 30, then 31 days, 30, 30, then 31 days, 30, 30, then 31 days, and again, 30, 30, and 31 days. And so when we tabulize this information along with the moon data, this is what it looks like. You have four seasons. You have the spring starting March the 20th, and then 90 days later, you have summer starting June the 19th, and then 91 days later, you have fall starting September the 18th. 
followed by winter, which starts 91 days later in December the 18th. Now, I know what you're thinking, that this is not when your calendar says the seasons start. And I promise you that's the problem, is that you're trying to make our Father's sacred calendar match up with man's calendar, and it's not going to work. They're not compatible at all. When you try to make an understanding of the sacred calendar based on what you know from the Gregorian calendar, you're just going to get confused and you will stay confused for a very long time until you finally put that Gregorian calendar down and try to learn the sacred calendar and take it from me. Once you learn the sacred calendar, then you can learn the Gregorian calendar. It makes sense. It's real easy. But you can't go the opposite way. But anyway, let's go on. Now, before we do, I will point out these green dots here. These are the 13th months. You heard that the sacred calendar has a 13th month every three years. Well, that's a little bit confusing and a little bit deceptive because not every year has an ADAR 2, which would be the 13th month. Most of the years, the extra month is found somewhere between the different seasons. Like, for instance, how in 2023, you will have an Elul 2 or a second six month in the year 2023. And that's because the 0% moon, which falls on September the 14th, comes before the Day of Remembrance which is October the 14th. So in other words, you will have four months in summer in the year 2023 and not three. The thing about it, and we're going to cover that in another video, this is why the majority of the people in the world who would normally never miss the Feast of Tabernacles will do so in the year 2023. And again, we're the only channel that's talking about this. And so this is why we'll cover so many videos on it. I hope you guys don't get bored. We always have additional information in the videos because we're learning every day. Please don't think we got this all figured out. Else a video may pop up that says, this is how the sacred calendar works. You assume that you already know how it works and don't click on that video and then you're going to end up missing the Day of Atonement in the year 2023 because the rest of the world is going to celebrate it a month too early. So that's one of the main reasons why you have to understand the 364 day calendar and how it works, how the days of remembrance play into the calendar, because if you don't, you're going to celebrate wrong in the year 2023 just like they did in the year 2021. But anyway, let's go on. Now, if you're wondering why it's so difficult to understand the calendar, why so many people get so confused, it's because of these two gentlemen, Constantine, the emperor of Rome, and Hillel, the president of the Sanhedrin, who together came up with a whole nother calendar system altogether. Let me just read this from worldslastchance.com. It says, One of the greatest frauds in the history of the world was perpetrated almost 1,700 years ago by the actions of two men. The Roman Emperor Constantine committed a potentious act. He unified his empire by promoting Sunday as the day of our Messiah's resurrection and outlawed the use of the biblical calendar for calculating Passover. Now, did you catch that? This is the emperor of Rome. The one who invented the Catholic Church outlawed the use of the biblical calendar. And when you read on, you find out that he actually murdered people for following the calendar as we just discussed it in the book of Enoch. So you have people that don't spend enough brain power trying to understand how this sacred calendar works all while there are people who have died through history trying to keep it 
Don't you think it should take just a little bit more effort when people put their lives on the line for this calendar? Anyway, it says, this set in motion a series of reactions. The Jewish leader Hillel too responded to the persecution following this legislation by a modification of the biblical calendar. In other words, the president of the Sanhedrin at the time changed the biblical calendar. Constantine outlawed it, and then Hillel too changed it. It says, this supplanted the true Sabbath day with the pagan Saturday. It was a chain of actions and reactions of epic proportions. The ramifications continue to this day with every Christian and Jew that worships by the Gregorian calendar. This is why they call the Gregorian calendar the mark of the beast. In other words, they have separated us from the mark of our father, which can only be acquired through the biblical calendar and created their own calendar. And since the word beast refers to the governments, these are government figures that did this. The Gregorian calendar is the mark of the beast. And those who don't understand the sacred calendar have the mark of the beast. But anyway, we'll cover that in another video too. Let's come over here to sciencedirect.com, which says the present Hebrew Jewish calendar was put into effect by Hillel II in the year 356 CE. And I'm glad they put that word in there, Jewish, because that's what this calendar is. It's a Jewish calendar. The word ish being that it's like the Hebrew calendar. It's not really the Hebrew calendar. It's almost like the Hebrew calendar. That's why they say it's a Jewish calendar. But notice that it was put into effect in 558 AD. And then when we come over here to history.com, we see that the Gregorian calendar was put into effect in 1582 AD. This is when our wall calendar system was created or changed by Pope Gregory. 1582 AD. Well, what I want to show you is that ever since that calendar has been created, nobody has gotten the day of atonement correct in a Jubilee year. This is why when you look in history to try to see if anybody had ever gained their land back during the 50th year, during the Jubilee year, you don't see any of it. You can't find records of it anywhere as if it never happened. The reason why was because nobody understood the sacred calendar and nobody got the atonement day in the Jubilee year correct. Don't believe me? Let me show you. We're looking over here at hebcal.com for the date of the memorial of blowing of trumpets in the year after the Gregorian calendar was instituted. And notice that it claims that the memorial of blowing of trumpets started on September the 16th. But looking back at our Enoch calendar, we see that the earliest date for the seventh month was September the 18th. Now, the Jewish calendar gives themselves two days for the memorial blowing of trumpets. So they possibly could have gotten it right in that year since they declared September the 18th as the last day of the memorial blowing of trumpets. But when we look a little bit closer, we see that their 10th day was on September the 25th. In other words, they would have been blowing the trumpets for the Jubilee year on September the 25th. But that's not 10 days after September the 18th. That's 10 days after September the 16th. So in other words, in that year, they blew the trumpets too early. Just like in the year 2022, they celebrated Atonement Day too early. So they didn't blow the trumpets on atonement day during that jubilee year and that's why you don't find any events taking place in that year like we said the calendar systems 
are the foundation for the marks. So nobody, especially not the Jewish people, had the mark of our father because they were following Hillel II's calendar. They was following the beast's calendar. And so they didn't get that release that they were supposed to get in 1583. They came close, but again, they missed the mark by a few days. But watch how that was the best they did. This was in 1583. Let's step ahead 49 years to the next Jubilee year in 1632. And you see that they declared the memorial of blowing of trumpets on September the 15th, which is well before September the 18th, which is when the gate starts. They did not wait on a confirmation of the day of remembrance. So they were celebrating in the sixth month instead of the seventh month. And when it came to the seventh month and the Jubilee Atonement Day, there was nobody in the Jewish community blowing the trumpets during that time. When you look at the next Jubilee year, 1681, Again, they were celebrating in the sixth month instead of the seventh month. Looking at 1730, again, they was too early. Celebrating in the sixth month, while the seventh month wouldn't have started to at least another moon away. 1779, again, in the sixth month, so anybody following the Jewish calendar would not have blown the trumpets on atonement day during the Jubilee year since the institution of the Gregorian calendar. They've gotten it wrong every year, all the way up to and including 1828, 1877. They got it wrong again. 1926. Nobody was blowing the trumpets on Atonement Day during that Jubilee year. Even in 1975, when our current Jubilee cycle started, the Jewish community and everybody following their calendar system was blowing the trumpets a month too early. Thing about it, when you look in the year 2024, it looks like they will actually be in the correct month. You see, they're declaring Rosh Hashanah to start on October the 2nd, which is after the sun enters the gate, indicating fall and the seventh month. So ever since the Gregorian calendar has been created and in effect, 2024 will be the first year that anybody following the Jewish calendar will blow a trumpet on Atonement Day. But will they get it right then? Let's take a look. According to the Jewish calendar that we see at Hebcal, their atonement day starts on October the 11th and ends on October the 12th. We see that Google confirms it. So they're going by the Jewish calendar too. But when we come over to timeanddate.com and look in October of the year 2024, we see that there will be a 0% moon on October the 2nd, but the first sighting of the moon will be no earlier than October the 3rd. So when we come over and we add that data to our spreadsheet calculator, understanding the earliest time that we could see the new moon will be October the 3rd. It could be the October the 4th. We have to wait and see. But there's no way you're going to see it before October the 3rd. That means that the earliest possible date for Atonement Day would be to start on October the 12th. So in other words, in the most critical day that we have coming up, which is Atonement Day in the year 2024, the people that don't understand the sacred calendar and just going by the, what the Jewish calendar says, they're actually going to be blowing their trumpets a day early and on the exact day of atonement, they're going to be silent, missing the day of atonement and the opportunity we have to receive the blessings of the Jubilee year.
Now, do you see how important it is to learn the sacred calendar? I hope so. If you're having trouble with it, just add your questions down in the comment section and I'll be glad to help. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and have that bell notification button pushed because we'll be putting out information as we receive it from our father, hallowed be his name. Go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't done so already and check out some of these classes on how the sacred calendar works. And I'll see you there.